This video is going to be a little interesting. Today we're going to take a low quality graphic and convert that to a high quality graphic in a super easy fun way in Photoshop. We definitely will get the sharp edges and the details but there's a warning to it. This technique only works with graphics which have not more than two colors. So if you have a graphic with one color, this will work. Two colors, definitely, but more than two, it won't. For more than two colors, there's another method that I've linked up at the end of the tutorial that uses Adobe Illustrator. The second warning is that when we begin to recover the details, when we try to do that, whether it's an image or a graphic, we will never be able to recover the details to 100%. Why is that so? Because once the detail is lost, once the image is blurred or the graphic loses its quality, Recovering the details would be like inventing the details because it's lost, right? So how do we do it? We actually hide it or fake it. So today we're gonna fake it. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and this is actually the high resolution graphic. So if we zoom in by holding the space bar and the control or command, drag the mouse to the right to make it bigger. Actually zooming in, it's all sharp. Everything is spot on. It looks great. We will try to achieve the same with the lower quality of the same image. So this is just for reference. Okay. So let's press control or command zero to fit the canvas to the screen. So that's another tip. All right, let's move to example number one, where we have it in just one color. Now this is for those examples where we just have one color and a transparent background. So what to do when you have a transparent background, just add a white background. Here's how to do it. Click on the adjustment layer icon and solid color and choose white and hit okay and put it behind the transparent layer. As simple as that or what you can do let's delete this just make sure the layer is selected then go to layer new background from layer. it automatically adds a white background to it thus making it a background layer however let me warn you on something if you plan to do this make sure the background color is white if it's black the story is got to be different so let's go back control alt Z command option Z and if the background color was black have a look if I do the same layer new background from layer it goes black so make sure it is white or if your graphic is white make sure it's black just do the opposite when you have white and black and you get the idea okay so if it's not black and white we'll discuss what to do in second example but for this example let's discuss black and white so make sure your background color is white now let's zoom in and have a look at the edges so if we zoom in let's have a look the edges are pretty jagged and it would be foolish on my part trying to recover the edges in this document without making any changes. So even if I create a new layer and try to repaint the edges with black color, so let's make the brush a little smaller like that. And if we try to paint it, uh, this is not going to work. Why? Because this document is small. Have a look at this. This document is just 250 by 240 pixels. That's very, very small. So if you cannot see the dimensions right over here, click on this small arrow and choose document dimensions. That way you will be able to see them. Now let's zoom out a little bit and first of all, increase the document dimensions. So let's delete this layer. We don't need that anymore. Go to image, image size. So let's increase it to some high quality. Let's choose 2000 width and make sure this is checked. What this does is that it maintains the aspect ratio. So make sure this clip is clicked on, not clicked off, clicked on. Okay. And then change it to 2000 or whatever value you choose. Make sure it's a high number, 4000 high quality. Hit OK. It's pretty fine, but still the edges have become smooth. It's not straight enough. It doesn't look good enough. So here's what I would suggest you to do. Blur it out simply blur it up now you can do this in the same layer but what i'm going to do i'm going to create one new layer so that you can see the before and after it's not necessary at all press ctrl or command j to make a copy of it okay then go to filter blur and gaussian blur now blur it to the point where the edges become smooth and seamless so let's decrease the value of the radius all the way to 0.1 and then gradually start increasing it. Now have a look, it's pretty jagged. So let's click on this to have a look at the preview and let's increase it gradually. Yep, that's looking pretty good, not awesome. I guess I would stay with 4.9, let's go 5.5. Let's see how that number does. Uh, yeah, that's pretty smooth, 5.4, let's go 5.4, hit OK. Now what we gotta do, we gotta add some contrast to it. You might ask why, well, let's zoom in. Let me show it to you why. So have a look at the edge. The edge, the kind of the pixels which are closer to the background, they are light gray, 
the pixels which are closer to the stroke, they are dark gray. What if we make the light gray pixels completely white and the dark gray pixels completely black? Wouldn't that become sharp? Which means that we are making the bright areas which are moderately bright, brighter, and we are making the dark areas darker. So as you can see, if we just point out, let's create a new layer. Let me just explain that to you. Let's choose something like green and okay. So these pixels right over here, they are light, right? They're very light and they're closer to white. So if we make it completely bright, they will show an edge just like this, right? So these areas will go completely white. Now these are closer to blacks. So this will go completely black and then the edge will be more defined. So let's delete this layer just for demo. All right. So let's create a curves adjustment layer. Now there are tons of ways of increasing contrast in Photoshop. You can use levels if you want, curves if you want, whichever is your favorite. So I'm gonna go ahead and use curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the slider from the right to the left. It makes the bright slider. See the edge that I was talking about? Now once you're satisfied with that edge, bring the left slider to the right, just like that. And there you go. There you go. Let's zoom out and have a look at this. Have a look at it. I think it's very thick. So you need to adjust it accordingly. So you need to push it to the right or push it to the left if you think it's too thick, too thin. That's totally your choice. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stop with this one. And let's have a look at the before and after. So here we have the after. Here we have the before. Completely jagged. This is completely sharp. And yes, we have lost detail over here. So this is the before. We have lost a little detail over here. We have also lost some details here. But then again, once you get it, it's very smooth. It's very sharp. And as I had already warned you before, we will never be able to recover the details to 100%. We can fake it. We can hide it. All right. Now, this was very low quality. So if you look at the original image, it is 2874 by 2752 pixels. It's very high resolution. And we made it 214 to 250, right? 215 to 240, whatever that was. Very low quality and we got that back. So this is the original one. And this is what we recovered from a 10 times lower resolution. Still usable, right? But this is an extreme example. What if it was not that much damage? You would have recovered most of it. So let's make it smaller by pressing Ctrl or Command T, making sure that the background layer is unlocked and then make it smaller. And if you make it smaller, okay, and make it big again, you will eventually what? Lose quality, hit enter. See, you have lost a little quality, not that much, but we have jagged edges. In this case, it's gonna be very easy. So if you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, now not that much blur, just stop at the point where everything looks smoother that's the word okay yeah 5.2 that's pretty okay it's okay and then simply add a contrast adjustment layer click on the adjustment layer and choose curves not contrast my bad curves and we will increase the contrast so do the same thing as you can see this does a much better job why because that was not very damaged. Now let's move to example number two, where we will talk about what to do when you have a colored image and not black and white. So this is colored image. Suppose you have something like this. Now this is extremely low resolution. If you zoom in, this is completely low resolution. So how do we recover that? First of all, let's convert this into black and white. How do we do that? Press Control Shift U. Command Shift U if you're using a Mac and that desaturates the image. Control Shift U. We can recolor it later. And just for safety, let's go back. Let's do this on a new layer. Control or Command J and then do it. Control Shift U, Command Shift U. Okay, now simply do the same thing. Blur it and increase the contrast. Do not worry about the white background or the black graphic. Do not worry about that because eventually it's gonna get white and black right? Because we will increase the contrast anyway. So let's blur it. Let's zoom it and then blur it. Filter, blur and Gaussian blur. But before we blur it, are we doing a mistake? What mistake are we doing? We cannot, we would be fool if we try to increase the quality in this document because this document is what? 250 into 240 pixels, very small. First, we need to increase the dimensions of the document. Go to image and then image size. Now, in this case too, let's put 2000. 
And before you hit OK, it's very essential that you look at the preview. So if you look at the preview, it adds a fake sharpness around the edge and that looks pretty ugly. So let's try other methods. By cubic sharper, no, that's not working. Let's choose by linear. If we choose by linear, it keeps it intact. Okay, hit OK for the most part. That's fine. And let's zoom out or press Control or Command zero to fit the canvas to the screen. That's pretty good. Now let's blur it out. How do we blur it out? Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's look at a preview from this section and just simply increase the radius 5.8. Or let's take a sample from this area. Now this is completely destroyed image. We won't be able to get uh, all the details here, but we will try to get the most that we can. All right, hit OK. And then let's try to increase the contrast. So click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Do the same thing from the right. That's pretty good. From the left. Now that's the most that we can recover from this. It's, it's, it's bad, I do understand that it's pretty bad. But that's the most if this was a very low quality image so we will try that's the most that we can do unfortunately all right so you see where this fails this is failing to do now if you have a higher resolution image that would be fine and how do we recolor it that's actually very simple create a new merged layer or a stamp visible layer by holding Control alt shift e command option shift e if you're using a mac that makes a merged layer of everything that you see in the canvas right now. So simply go to select and then color range and select this black color, that's fine. Or you can also choose shadows and make a selection of this. So you can choose the range and the fuzziness is actually the softness and hit OK. Now it makes a selection of the black area. All you need to do now is click while the selection is still on, click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color and choose whatever color there was and hit OK. Now you don't need this anymore. Delete this. You don't even need all of this. So you can delete all of this and create one more solid color adjustment layer with the background color, which was yellow in that case. So you can also sample that if you want to. You can turn that off. You can turn this back on, double click on it and you can sample the right color, whatever it was. Hit OK, double click on it, sample the yellow color. Hit OK and then turn this back on and delete all of these layers and you get the idea. So that's how we transform a low res graphic to a high res graphic in Photoshop and that is fake. I gotta admit that. Now, there happens to be an amazing program that goes by the name of Adobe Illustrator which does a much better job at this. Even if you have more than two colors, it gives you the option to determine the number of colors, are there corners in the image, all those bunch of sliders which really help you convert those raster images into vector. Now vector is a kind of an image which is not based upon pixels. It's based on mathematical formulas, which means that if you have a vector graphic, no matter how big you make it or how small you make it and you make it big again, it never gets pixelated. It never loses quality. So I have a video on converting raster images to vector. Check out that video if you have an image with more than two colors or you want to do a much better job and you want to learn Adobe Illustrator. Just as a recap, what we just did. First of all, make sure it's black and white. Number one. Number two, make sure that the background and the graphic is on one layer. Okay. Then, before you try to increase the quality, it's always essential to increase the document size, the document dimension. Why is that essential? It would be foolish because the decreased document size only has that many pixels, limited. So we need to increase it. And then simply add a curves adjustment layer or a levels adjustment layer. Make the brights brighter and the darks darker. And you're pretty much good to go. And if you have to recolor it, you can make a selection of the black area or the white area and then create solid color adjustment layers or even fill it. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.